journey with you guys today. Thank you for coming to church. Thank you for joining online. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to church. It's another wonderful Sunday in the presence of God. Are you excited to be here? I am. I haven't been here. I wasn't here last month, and I'm sure you had an amazing time in the presence of God. Are you enjoying your summer? School is all done now. We are all having fun. Some of you are on vacation. Hey, and thank God for online you class. Church. You can still watch thank us you anyway. enjoying. Online. How beautiful is that? Isn't, that? isn't God wonderful? God is great. But before we do anything today, let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this amazing Sunday. We thank you that it is the third week of July. We thank you for yeah, the great things that you're doing for I wasn't here last month, please. I'm sure you had this summer amazing break. time in the we thank you because we are you enjoying your summer. You School is all done we now. We are all having fun. So we are on vacation. And thank God for online classes. You can still watch us today. How beautiful is that? Isn't God wonderful? God is serious. But before we do anything today, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Guys, do you know what is next? It's praise and worship. Let's go dancing. Get up from your yeah, chairs. I am. I have no you had I wasn't here last just month. Get up from I'm sure you had dance around the church. You've been in school for God. 10 months. And you're enjoying your summer. Food. School is, is all done now. Sufficient for you. Having fun. You're not so sick. You're not patient. So let's and get up. Thank God for God. online all class. Let's go dancing. that. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and I will sing. I'm standing on the promises that God has made to me. I am standing, standing on the promises. Yes, I am standing, standing on the promises, on the promises of God. I'm standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all God 
And I know God loves me Yeah, He knows what's best for me Cause He knows every single thing And I believe His promise is true Cause everything He says He will do Oh, on a Sunday When it's time to come to the house of God, I'm always happy to come to the presence of God. And I know you are. I'm sure you have your Bible. I've told you every time it's time for us to share the word of God. You can go up, get your Bible, pause the video. That's come why it's back. video. You pause sure it, get your Bible, and then we can all study together. Today, we're going to be learning about a new topic. How God did what? How God made a covenant with David. But before I talk about what covenant is and how we can get we can make Come covenant back. with sure people and people can make covenant with us, we're going to talk about all that. But Today we're going that, to be learning about like our dear friend who has worked so hard oh God, did to learn the memory verse to need a covenant with David. But before I talk back i'm sure you have thank you dear friend for taking that, time i would like our dear verse. friend who has worked so god hard we surely to learn the memory of us told you every little bit of work that you put in for god god always reward us thank you so much we appreciate your hard work like i said before we went home that today's mem today's topic is how god made a covenant with david what is covenant covenant is a promise made to someone by people all that but before that but i would like to give a friend who has that worked so hard to learn the, the promise that was made to us and that we get from the bible whatever god says god always do it but before we go into deep into covenant and what god has said and how he has done it i want us to bring it back all to that. ourselves but before that i would like our dear friend who has worked so hard have you ever to learn the memory of us before as, as somebody promised you, you can imagine your friend's birthday is coming and you tell your friend, I'm going to get you a birthday present. And then you get home. Your parents said, oh no, I'm sorry, I can't afford it. And then you have to go back All to that the friend. But before say, that, one like our dear friend who has worked so hard one, to lend you the memory of us friend will be hard working because by the time you tell your friend that I don't have the money, I can't get you the present, the person will be hard working. And you as well, imagine when you ask your parents for something and they said, okay, don't worry, by the end of the year, if you get to that, he is, I'm I would like our dear friend who has something worked so hard, hard unable to fulfill to their promise, memory verse to you had broken, you will not want to trust them again. That's what happens. When a promise is broken, trust is also broken. But with God, when he says something, he does it. When All God that, chose David, that, David, I was like just our dear friend who has boy. worked so hard. And God so made the memory verse too. And when God saw what David was doing, God said, You, David, 
I am going to raise a king from your lineage. And do you know who that king is that is going to reign forever? Right. When he says this, we'll talk thing. about that. Let's just it. watch the video. When God chose David. God had chosen David to be the next king of Israel. King Saul had died, and God gave his people a time of peace. David lived in a beautiful palace in the city of Jerusalem. David brought the Ark of the Lord to Jerusalem and set it inside a tent he had pitched for it. One day, David was talking with Nathan the prophet. David said, I live in a palace of nice cedar wood, but the Ark of God sits inside a tent. It hardly seemed fair. Shouldn't God have a nicer house than I do? David wanted to build a temple for the Ark of God. Nathan said, God is with you. Do what you want. But God did not want David to do whatever he wanted. God wanted David to do what God wanted. That night, God gave Nathan a message for David. This is what God told Nathan to say. David, are you going to build a house for me to live in? I brought my people out of Egypt. I gave them leaders to guide them. The entire time I have been with them, my house has been a tent. Did I ever ask anyone to build a temple for me? You used to be a shepherd, David, but I made you a king. I helped you defeat your enemies, and my people now live peacefully in their own land. I promise you, David, that you and your descendants will be kings. When you die, one of your sons will be king. He will be a strong king, and no one will be able to take his kingdom away from him. He will build a house for me. I will love him, and I will never leave him. When your son dies, his son will be king. Someone in your family will be king forever. Nathan told David everything that God said. David went into the tabernacle. He sat down and prayed, God, I don't deserve anything you've done for me, and you promised to do so much more. You are so great. There is no one like you. You chose the Israelites to be your own people. You rescued them from slavery in Egypt. God, please keep your promises. I know your words are always true. God promised David that future kings of Israel would come from David's family, and David's kingdom would last forever. God kept his promise by sending his son Jesus as one of David's descendants. Jesus is our king who will rule over God's people forever. Welcome back from the video. From the video we saw that God gave David grace. And do you know what grace is? Grace is when, some, when God gives God us kept something good when we don't deserve it. So you see, there's so many things that happen to us. There's so many things that happen to our parents. Ask them, they will tell you that we are all living by God's grace. One of the things that the Bible tells us about God is that he said that it will, his grace God is sufficient for us. As one of that means in everything that we do, His forever. grace is always there for us. Our Bible text is taken from First God Samuel God. chapter 6 and chapter 7. It's, it's quite lengthy. True. So I want you guys to go home and go and study it. That future and you will see how God updated God kept his at every point in time. How the grace of God was working for him. Well, forever. Some of your parents came to Canada. It was the grace of God that sustained your family. That's how grace is. Always true. Some of them came here to this to this country that without knowing anybody. But grace brought God them kept through. His process as grace one paved the way for them. For and you, you are in school, you are getting all your A's, you are, you are obedient, you are, you, everything is coming through. It's the grace of God that God true. promised David that we are still enjoying. Because that when God promised David, he gave us a king that, is, that lived God forever, and that's Jesus. One of so when we connect the, the Old Testament and we connect it to the New Testament, you see that they are the same. Well, Jeff, because God, God told David, don't worry, I'm going to true. make a king from your lineage. There was Solomon, and I'm sure David was, would have thought that that's just the end. God kept his promise but God said, one a king David. that will reign forever. He didn't just say a king. Well, forever. Solomon was a king, which eventually he died. Well, but a king forever. We have Jesus. He lives. He's alive. So it's one promise that God promised David that, he's still, that we're still enjoying now. 
So when we want to make promises to people, let's think about it. Well, God. to be sure that we can, you know, fulfill the promise. We're not going to break their heart. We're not going to that let them feel that they do. we're not going to trust God. God because if we say that we're Christians, we should say things that will align with the Bible. Forever. We should just say things that, oh, that's just it. Well, I'm just going to say it just to get out of trouble. But why do you want to get out of trouble where we can always know that, that when we say the truth, the truth is going to set us free? God kept his promise. Yes, there are consequences for our actions, but the truth always stands firm. I know that at times things are difficult, we don't know what to do. But remember that our word should be like the word of God. Yes, there are consequences for our actions. God is good. But the truth always is stands once for say everything and it comes to pass. I know that the time promises it things says something God. and then it fulfills it. It's are always true. Let's hear the that memory verse from our dear friend again. Hello. Yes, there are consequences. Welcome back to the channel. Our memory verse for the today truth. is Hebrews 10 is verse. 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope I know that without wavering. For he promised Mrs. It a says something. And then he fulfills it. You know? Let's just know that the grace yes, that we have us from our death. Being born again. Yes, that consequence by faith is grace. Being alive today is grace. For the truth. Everything is that one do that we can go to school, we can be dropped at school, is grace. grace. Everything My friend's come. job is grace. I know that at times, so please remember one thing this is it says something as you enjoy your vacation and then it fulfills remember it. The love of God should radiate in your life. You should not let him not trust, trust God day. because of your behavior. You should yes, know that the word of God is, is fulfilled in your life to bring other people to Christ. But the truth, we always say that we are an is ambassador the of the Christ here on earth. I say for Christ, don't break your promise. Don't I know that promise at that times, you fulfill. God is the only one that makes promises. That fulfills it. It. Some, if you're going to make any promise, know that And then it fulfills it. You're going to stand by your word. And God will help us in Jesus. Yes, hear the memory of us from our yes. dearest way. My father and my yes, mother, there are thank you for how you have helped us this today. How you have helped us to the truth covenant that you have made with us. Us. Because whatever you made with David, we are enjoying today and God to you. with all the glory and all the I know the that at times, in the name of Jesus, Father, thank you. Mrs. It it we say something, we give you praise. In this and then if we period, let, let us live our life to glorify your name in Jesus name. Let's hear the memory of us from our death. It's been amazing learning with yes, you guys today. Thank you for coming to church. Thank you for joining online. But the truth is that God, God loves you and I love you more. Have a blessed week. Because whatever you made with David, we're enjoying. I say everything and in comment today, Lord, to you be all, all the glory and all the praise.